Howdy, Ken. How you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Doing well. Doing well. Episode 25. Today we are being very, very serious because this is a serious subject. The legal side of affiliate marketing and the fact that you must comply. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to comply with the legality of what the law says you have to do as an affiliate marketer. Does this, does, does legal ramifications of getting possibly legal action or being sort of, you know, not in compliance, does it worry you in your business as an affiliate marketer? Uh, it does. It, it does. For me, I, I want to be as, and, and you know, we, we're, we're very open and transparent about our business. And I think the way your page is set up and, and everything, all your digital assets, you know, kind of reflect that. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier pre-podcast about certain pages that we go to for people, you know, there, there is the, it's the window or the, or the storefront of their business and, you know, not having any type of, uh, you know, legal pages and things like that, which are required by the way they're required. Um, you know, it, 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 just opens you up and it's not very hard to be in compliance. I think as, as, as an affiliate, because you can set up these pages super easy. There's plugins for these kinds of things. If you guys are looking for plugins, you can find this kind of uh, text out, out on, on the internet that you can use as a template to build your legal pages. But yeah, I, for me, it's, it's super important. How about you? I think it's just the right thing to do. You know, if, if, if you're going to, and even if you're doing this as a side hustle, you should be aware, just like anything, when you're talking about money and money changing hands, right? An exchange of services or an exchange of money for goods and or services, mm -hmm. you know, you, the law is always going to come down at some point. You know what I mean? It's like, you just got to be real about that. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of it are a big issue. Of course, we're both in the U.S. and we're both from the U.S., right? So we like sort of live in this world of compliance and especially depending on what state you're in, even, yeah. you know, it can be a little different and the world, when you come online at first, you know, you, you think of it as a little bit more of the wild, wild west, but I mean, this is 2022. I mean, <laughs> it's like everybody knows what's right, what's wrong. And the fact that, you know, things online are perceived either, you know, rightfully so or unrightfully so as scams. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think a lot of that is just protection of yourself and just understanding and knowing that, hey, look, I'm doing business. I want to protect myself and my business. And I just want people to know that I'm, you know, upfront, honest, transparent, ethical, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it just all boils down to, you know, if you're starting a, a serious business, even if it's a side hustle, you're starting, if you're starting a business, that you should be upfront about that because if you're thinking long term of this side hustle bringing you some extra cash, cash and you eventually becoming full time, then having these kinds of mechanisms in place is super important. And um, you know, I, I think that I think because I, you had mentioned that people feel that this is kind of like the wild wild west that I'm hiding behind the screen and you know I have an IP address and that's it. No one can find me. That it makes you makes you so it gives you that false sense of, of, I guess, confidence that you can do whatever you want. But trust me, eventually, <laughs> eventually, they'll catch you. And it's just a matter of time. Um, you know, I, I, I want to talk about a uh, little bit about my, my uh, FBA experience. So fulfillment by Amazon or, or fulfilled by Amazon. I was, I was a um, seller for a number of years. And I remember meeting with um, someone here in, in my state, in my, in my town, and we just wanted to create like a mastermind group and we were talking about things and, and I brought up the subject of taxes because it's tax season was coming up and I'd asked this person if they were going to pay taxes or, or had they already filled out their and done their taxes. And she, and she told me no, flat out no, that she hadn't done it for 10 years. And that for me, I stopped there right there. And I said, you know, I just read this article in the paper that said that the, the state was going to go and, and start cracking down. They were going to go through, everybody and 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 find these people who haven't paying taxes so if you if you haven't been paying them you better start doing them now fess up 
pay the pe uh, penalties and fines and just move on because otherwise you don't want to be stuck in that kind of a mix master that's not a good place to be for sure you know it's funny that you talk about that you know amazon of course i, I sell and i publish books on amazon as a yeah. self-publisher and i have a whole channel about that but when i first came online uh, in 2017 to do affiliate marketing of course i heard and i looked at you know the amazon of amazon associates program to be an affiliate for amazon and i was like for sure right like you know amazon everybody buys stuff on amazon yeah. and uh i live in arkansas so i went to the website and i was like gonna sign up for the affiliate program and back then you couldn't be an amazon affiliate in the state of arkansas because it's some high level between the state government what you're talking about when you're talking about taxes right mm -hmm the state government didn't have an agreement with Amazon for taxes. Exactly. Right. Like yeah. they didn't figure it out. And it was this whole thing about, you know, the state of Arkansas didn't want to not get their cut of the money because they were positioning it as it wasn't fair to local business mm -hmm. and whatever. But the idea there is, yeah, it, it boils down to your state and local laws and regulations. But, uh, but for me, I think at the end of the day, it just boils down for me personally of just, being a person that you can trust right yeah. and again doing the right thing yeah and i think a lot of this is you know just understanding and saying okay you know what is compliance what is the law and sort of looking at this and going well what's the difference between being compliant you know and, and not being in foul the law or you know what i mean just doing what's right you know yeah yeah it i guess it's your business your choice at the at the end of the day um but yeah you're right it's it's to me i i want people to know that i'm open and honest and that i've got nothing to hide and that that's the way i do business because even though we're online and again i just feel like when you're online people feel like you can hide behind stuff and that you're that people don't know where you are and, and who you are but i look at it i like to treat my business as if i have a corner cafe like a coffee shop where people come there and, you know, I want to, I want to do business in a way that people want to come back, that people feel comfortable, you know, being, you know, a, a customer of mine and just give that kind of a, a, a personal, personalized touch, I guess, to my business. And so, you know, doing things like that, just the small things, because I don't want to worry about that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff, you know, setting up your legal pages and being compliant with certain things should, shouldn't be an issue unless you are doing something that you shouldn't be doing right so i think for me it's just being honest is just part of what we do and i know for what i do so i've got no problem being compliant at all i think it's it's an issue of like you said building the foundations and understanding as a side hustle that you're still doing business you know you're having you're having a transaction with with another human another with another person and the law is going to you know step in at any point that that other person feels that they didn't get their money's worth, you know, for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. And when you're dealing with, you know, that human element, I mean, you know, we've, we've all been ripped off in our life, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we've all thought that we didn't get our money's worth, you know, even maybe if we did, right. According to the yeah. contract, yeah. meaning, you know, the, the money that we gave them and what the service and or the product we got, I mean, we got what we paid for. Right. Right. Even though you may not feel like it. So I think the first thing to understand is sort of where we're coming from with this as far as today's date, November 19th, 2022, when we're, when we're shooting this podcast. 2021. 2021, <laughs> heading into 2022. <laughs> as we're shooting this podcast, you know, and that's really the thing, right? It's kind of like the end of the year. And it seems to me like, you know, things like this happen towards the end of the year, you know, big changes or like big announcements. And uh, one of the announcements for us, of course, over at Ken Furikow Marketing and 30 Minute Marketing, you know, the YouTube channels, we review these products and the majority of these products are in the make money online space, internet marketing space, and they're training and or software products. And they're sold through a marketplace. And that marketplace is warrior plus. And a lot of people think of warrior plus as being shady or non-compliant or just allowing scammers and people to rip people off. You know, of course, warrior plus is a corporation, a business ran by people. And whether or not those people are shady or, you know, being ripoff artists or whatever, I mean, I'm not going to speak to that. I personally don't believe they are. I don't think they would go to all that time trouble, you know what I mean? And do all that hard work to set up a marketplace to bring in and let other people come in and use it and to build this 
group of vendors and affiliates to be able to sell these digital products. Because when you go to that link, that length, and you just put that kind of investment of your time and your own money, I think you're looking at that at the long haul, right? Now, the people that use that marketplace, you know, that's a different story. Yeah. You know, and because the marketplace Warrior Plus is in the U.S., and a lot of people that sell products aren't in the U.S., when you talk about compliance and laws, of course, like we look at it and we think in something like the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, which is, you know, part of the reason that we pay taxes is to get that kind of protection, you know, from unscrupulous activity of people that would sell us stuff and we wouldn't get our money's worth, you know? So their role is to protect the American consumer. And in October of 2021, they released a notice to advertisers saying, look, you cannot do certain things. And we've been noticing an uptick, meaning there's been more and more of this occurring where people, and I'm not talking about just the digital space. I mean, products across the board where people are using false testimonies, you know, fake testimonies, making stuff up, using false fake scarcity, and just basically just to just put it plainly lying on their sales pages. Yeah. And, and I think that's, I, I'm glad you brought up the larger picture because it's not just in our world. It's, it's everywhere. I mean, and I, I guess having the benefit of being an affiliate and reviewing products on a daily basis and understanding, you know, how this works, it kind of helps me when I'm out in the quote unquote real world. I'm using the air quotes for the you know, podcast. Yes. The first one. And to, to really be able to dissect these products and, and kind of see what the angle is because I, and I don't like to be that way, but you just have to be on your guard. You can't always be so trusting about things that you see. And so, you know, for I, for one, was happy to see the FTC put out a statement like that because I just want them to to, you know, basically do their job and and enforce whatever they need to enforce. Now, granted, they can't enforce it everywhere. So obviously they're going to be looking at more of the big time operations that are out there that are bringing in multi millions of dollars probably a day. But you know, it's nice to see that there is some sort of oversight that's that's supposed to happen. And whether or not that happens, who knows? But again, <laughs> I just like, I mean, we, we really don't know, right? That's just, that's the rub. I mean, you can send out a statement and say you're going to do this, but are you really going to do it? And that is the rub. That's the rub. It is, right? I mean, they put it out there, to say that they're going to do it, and they, they've noticed this, but are they really doing it? That's the thing. And I, I think that's something that, for me, you know, as time goes by, I'm, I'm going to be monitoring. I, I want to know and, uh, and be aware of it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I even made a video about it. And the idea of that video was to just let people know, hey, look, they made the announcement. Of course, the announcement might have been forced, right? Like from the FTC. So the FTC sends out an information notice saying, hey, we're, we're watching, we're, we're looking, right? We're paying attention. Big Brother is, is paying attention. You know, we, it's getting a little out of hand, so let's, let's rein it in. So then you look at a place like Warrior Plus, and of course, like I said, we have a lot of visibility because of our channels, and we, we look at those products because we're in that space. But the idea in, in, a bigger, in a bigger sense is, and, you know, we talked about Amazon, is as an affiliate, you have a whole process, and you agree to these terms and these services when you sign up. You know, and, and we're, we're also used to signing up for online accounts and just going check, check, click, okay, accept, accept, agree, yeah. agree. But, you know, you're really agreeing to this and those are legal binding contracts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the world now in the digital space is set up. They're recording those clicks and those checks. You know, it's like when you sign up for an email list, you know, you have to click and, you know, accept the fact that, hey, yes, you know, I, I agree to go on an email list and receive certain types of emails. You know, so if you break that trust when somebody jumps on your email, if you start selling that email or if you start sending them things outside of what they agreed to receive, then you're quote unquote, quote unquote, air quotes for the for the podcast listeners. I just use both hands to do the air quotes. You're, you're out of compliance, right? Yeah. So I wanted I wanted to just bring this into and take it and make sure that, you know, we're not just talking about Warrior Plus, but that's sort of, you know, the theme or the or the trending news or the topic that hit us right over at Ken Fury Account Marketing and 30 Minute Marketing was that that announcement came from them based upon that FTC announcement. 
But if you go back and you, again, you look at Amazon or you look at other big marketing platforms, I know there's been some questions on the YouTube channel and people have made comments and us information. And they're like, what, what other platforms out there, right? Like to do affiliate marketing online. Well, you know, there's big platforms like uh, CJ.com or Commission Junction, yep. or Rec, Rec, Rakuten. Rakuten, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Awin, right? Awin.com, which yep. you, which now owns ShareASell. You know yep. what I mean? So a lot of these are affiliate marketing places and also uh, CPA or yep. cost per acquisition. But it, it's all the same thing. Affiliate marketing and CPA is really, it comes down to the technical aspect of the fact that there's two groups. There's the vendor or there's the advertiser and the publisher. And in, inside of that world, the advertiser is the one that has the product or the vendor. And the publisher or the affiliate is the one putting out content on behalf of that company. Again, this goes back to affiliate marketing of building those relationships between the company that makes the product, the advertiser and you, the publisher or the affiliate, and also building that audience and not violating anything that the company stands for, as well as the company that is using something like AWIN to track compliance, to make sure that all their affiliates are in compliance with things like these FTC regulations. And I wanted to read something real quick from awin.com. And it's simply the answer to the question, what is compliance? In its simplest form, a compliance team prevents unethical activity, ensuring a fair space for both advertisers and publishers to operate. Advertisers and publishers, that's vendor and affiliate, typically right. what we call them, right? It protects advertisers from paying out commissions to publishers on sales that have been that have resulted from unscrupulous activity, while it protects publishers from having their cookies overwritten by another publisher's activity and losing the sale. Now, there's a lot to unpack in that paragraph and the different stages and the different ways or the different entities that are being protected and how they're being protected by using a service like AWIN. Yeah, and I, I think it's, you know, I, it just goes both ways, right? I mean, if you're talking about compliance, you know, having a having a service like AWIN to manage that process is to me like the ultimate, right? Because now you have this outsource, this, you know, uh, hired gun, so to speak, that that's going to do this for you. And, you know, the compliance piece is to me, you know, it, it's hard to when you're the vendor, it's very hard sometimes to to manage that that part. And when you're an affiliate, I mean, it's, it's hard, you know, obviously there's some of some of us who want to do things a certain way and others do it another way. It's, it's like it's like driving on the highway, right? Some of us drive a little bit faster than others on the highway. I mean, we all do it. Some of us jaywalk and, you know, it's that little gray area. But, you know, having these types of, of uh, organizations in place that are going to that are going to help enforce that is important. And, you know, when you talk about the, the terms of service, right, and, and when we sign up for stuff, nobody reads that stuff. That's the part that, you know, no one wants to read it because it's such, such, you know, long legal jargon that nobody wants to sit there and half of it, I don't even understand. So I know, you know, probably 99.9% .9 of people out there, and I'm one of them, you know, I just scroll right down to the bottom and I click, yes, I agree. And I, and I do because, and but part of it is because I know that I'm going to be operating on, on the up and up, right? I'm going to do things the way that they're supposed to be done um but that doesn't that doesn't um it preclude it doesn't it doesn't i guess eliminate you from not complying you know just because you get accepted into there doesn't mean that all right now i can do whatever i want and you know there, there are some yeah, people that do sure. that yeah, there are some people sure. that do that they just want to get accepted in there and they're going to do whatever they want and you know again these types of compliance uh compliancy or whatever you want to call it is there to protect everyone everyone from from vendor to to um, affiliate to the consumer right it's, it's there in place to protect everyone and as long as everyone's willing to follow those those rules that, that are set forth when you sign those terms and conditions everything's gonna be fine but then again you know there's always people out there that are gonna try and do things a little differently yeah i just wanted to read that paragraph from awin to understand to let people know that you know when we're talking about compliance we're talking about compliance and agreements and being cool or not being unethical and yep. doing the right thing between the vendor and the affiliate, you know, because that's a relationship, you yep. know, because you have other affiliates. Because, I mean, think about the simple just as an example. If a vendor has a product and he accepts two affiliates, right? So he accepts Ken and he accepts me 
and Ken is crazy good at driving traffic for this specific product. And he just sells more of it, you know, and people are happier with that bonus or whatever, or I have a higher refund rate for whatever reason, you know, then what if they start working together or Ken just decides to overwrite all my cookies and, you know, and just start taking all my commissions. And I'm like, where are all my commissions going? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, so that relationship between the vendor and something like AWIN, who is the affiliate, you know, middleman at that point, who is the marketplace, like the Warrior Plus we talked about earlier, or like Amazon, it's just where goods are sold. It's like going to Walmart or going to the grocery store. Yep. You know what I mean? It's just where the stuff is sold. So it's important to understand compliance and ethics work hand in hand and the relationship between the affiliate and the vendor. But it's also important to understand. And really, I think the big thing, like what we're talking about with Warrior Plus, is that notification from the FTC. So when we're talking about, you know, laws, rules and regulations, of course, this is going to apply in your own country. And of course, you know, we're not giving anybody legal advice, obviously. Yeah. But the American law and regulation that is the FTC that most people are aware of, especially if they're going to get into the business world and, on, you know, making money online is they require that advertisers and endorsers, right? So publishers, bloggers, influencers, whatever, you have to have a, a disclosure, an affiliate disclosure. This is like the basic foundation. Like when you first hear about affiliate marketing, you know, this is like the basic thing that you have to do. You have to disclose the fact that you are an affiliate. This yep. is the biggest requirement. And this is as simple as just saying, hey, I make money from the recommendation of this product. If you can't even do that, then you, you, you are, there's no way, no how you're ever going to be compliant. And, and I'll just state it even simpler than that. If you don't take it serious enough to understand that you have to have an affiliate disclosure and it has to be a part of your foundational business, the fact that you are making money from the review that you do or the recommendation that you do, or just having a link on your website, then you're never going to make it in this business and you just, your ethics are out the window at that point. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like one of the first thing that I added to my website when, or my landing pages as well. It is so important to state that. And, you know, I think part of it too, you know, being open up and, and honest about saying like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to, I, I could make some money when you, when you purchase something through my link, it doesn't change the cost or the price of the product. I'm just recommending that, you know, some people, some people like people who are customers uh, view that as you lying <laughs> that, that you want to make the sale. Um, and that's, I guess that's a whole different, that's a whole different um, conversation right there. But yeah, having that FTC um, compliance thing and, and clearly stating that, that you're making this recommendation, um, you know, and you could get compensated for it is super important. And, you know, I think it go, it all boils down to just how you run your business. If if you do reviews and you write articles and you're passionate about a specific uh, niche and a specific product that can solve the problem of the people that are coming to your site, then I got no, I got no problem with that. Um, well, well researched, well you know, presented with facts and, and things like that. Those are the kinds of, of articles and videos and things that I don't mind watching. I don't mind clicking on a link and supporting that person because they did all the legwork for me. That's the thing, right? So you know, I mean, but part of it is too, when you are a consumer, you have to go through, you have to check out the person that you're, you're reading that article from, you have to check out their website, you have to do your due diligence as, as a consumer as well, to protect yourself from, you know, from scams or ripoffs or whatever you want to call them. Um, just so you know who you're dealing with, because I, I think part of the problem is that there are people out there that just that just believe everything they read online when they go into Google, that's, that's, you know, whatever shows up, that's, that's the truth. And you gotta, sometimes you gotta, you gotta dig a little bit deeper and, you know, having these kinds of, you know, FTC disclaimers and a privacy policy and a terms and conditions, a basic foundation for any website has to have these things, you know, that that's a start. When, when I see that I instantly, I know, okay, well, at least they know, you know, that I know they're in compliance. That they that they take this stuff seriously. If you don't have it on there, to me, like Gary said, I don't, I don't think you take it uh, seriously enough. And that this is something that you should look into. It's something that doesn't take long to do to add to your website, but it's so necessary. Yeah, 
and you know, like you said, you know, you're digging into it and you're being serious about it. And because of the warrior plus announcement and how it impacts, you know, Ken and myself over at our YouTube channels, Ken Fury Cow Marketing and 30 Minute Marketing, you know, it is big news for us. And we're for sure going to be digging into that, that story and tracking it. Because like I said, you have to, you know, it's great that they made the notice. It's great that they made the announcement, but are they just giving it lip service? You know, are they just doing it just to, just to try to be compliant on their end? Like we were talking about the compliance. Hey, look, look, Mr. Federal agent FTC guy, look at the post I made, right? I sent out an email to everybody. Look, I'm being compliant because at the end of the day, there's, there is, some distance between compliance and being ethical, being honest, yeah. being yeah. truthful. You know, yeah. you can, you can 100% be compliant all day long and still be a straight up, you know, rip up, rip off artist, scammer. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But you look 100% above board. You'd be like, no, there's nothing wrong here. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're fully compliant with, you know, the FTC regulations. Yeah. yeah but you're still ripping me off at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, and that's really what we talk about. You know, when we talk about the affiliate files and the truth about making money online, it's being honest and transparent. And of course, the fact that we come here on the podcast and we talk about that is based upon what we do over at 30 Minute Marketing and Ken Fear Kyle Marketing. So, you know, it's not really appropriate here for us to really dig into Warrior Plus because, you know, for the affiliate files, it's it's about being an affiliate and it doesn't matter physical product, external product, doesn't matter what your niche is. You know, so that's really why we're not digging into it here. But that doesn't mean that we're not digging to it in over on our channels individually and or together. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's important. You know, this is a forum to talk about affiliate marketing in general. And but, you know, compliance is super important, regardless of of what niche you're in and what you're selling. It, it is super important. And, you know, take it seriously because. You never know. You never know. You might get a notice in the mail one day and your heart will just stop right there. And you just you just never know. So, you know, take it seriously, guys. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, you can reach out to us. We'll try and help you. We're, again, we're not we're not attorneys, so we can't give you legal advice. But you know, for sure, you know, we, we try to do things. Um, we try to at least present it and, and tell you guys that being open and honest and transparent about your business dealings allows you to sleep at night um and and but how you conduct your business in terms of what gary was saying between compliance and being ethical that's another thing too that's a whole other <laughs> a whole other can a can of worms that we can open up and, and talk yeah. about and we probably will and it's so true it's like ken said how do you sleep at night on piles and piles of money because <laughs> <laughs> i was open and honest and transparent and i was ethical about my business exactly that's how so, I do it. so i sleep well on all that money because i know i worked hard for it and i earned it the right way but yeah. you know it's true too and i just want to hit that before we leave is the simple fact that compliancy and being ethical honest open and transparent is going to be different depending on the niche as well you know yeah. some niches yeah. you just it's it's more important to be even you know more transparent because it does involve people you know spending their money mm -hmm. and that directly impacts them or it impacts their health yeah. you know what i mean which is even bigger like if you're in that space you got to take that very serious. You know what I mean? Like if you're giving anything that even sort of hints at medical advice, I mean, that's a whole nother world. That's a whole nother topic. And just being compliant with the FTC and disclosing the fact that you're an affiliate doesn't even scratch the surface. So yeah. just be aware of that as well. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's all I got to say. What about you, Ken? I got nothing other than the fact that, you know, Black Friday's coming around. Black Friday's coming. You, you guys, you guys know about Black Friday. It's the day after Thanksgiving here in the states, and I can't think of a better way than to talk about a little segue here, a little plug for the Affiliate Files merch store. So we just launched our merch store. We're we're wearing some of the merch that's available on yep. that store, and go ahead and check it out. Yeah. So if you go to the AffiliateFiles.com, there'll be a button that says Shop. It's right there on the menu. You can click that. Of course, if you're here on the YouTube channel, you can already see that we have our affiliate file shirts on. And we have some uh, additional merch that you'll be seeing in future episodes. So if you're on the podcast, head over to the YouTube channel and uh, just uh, at least look at the thumbnail because you'll definitely probably see some, maybe some merch on the thumbnail this week, Ken. Maybe, maybe. 
<laughs> All right. And with that, he's Ken. I'm Gary. And we'll talk to you later.